Hello, uh, my name is Sofia Carbonari. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be here in the CWL conference of 2023. I'm working for the technical coordination team of eBrains via Athena Research Center, which is located in Athens at Greece. I'm here to talk about standardized workflows at eBrains. Without further ado, eBrains is a European distributed digital infrastructure for brain and brain inspired research. It is an open state-of-the-art research infrastructure that facilitates scientists to collect, analyze, share and integrate brain data, as well as perform modeling and simulation of brain function. eBrains is the output of the Human Brain Project and thousands of different scientific publications, data and hundreds of software is linked via eBrains. eBrains comes via six service categories. We have data and knowledge that facilitates sharing, uh, sharing and access of research data, computational models and software, community for eBrains users to collaborate with each other, medical data analytics with um, uh, platforms that cover key areas in clinical neuroscience, atlases for navigation, analyzing information on the basis of anatomical, anatomical location, simulation for brain researchers to conduct simulation studies and sharing their results, as well as brain-inspired technologies for understanding and leveraging the computational cap capabilities of spiking neural networks. Each of these service categories comes with a plethora of sub-services. Each one of those it is one of them facilitating neuroscience and brain-inspired technologies. What we see here is a logical architecture of eBrains. Uh, eBrains comes with a lot of front, with different front-ends, uh, different eBrain services from different service categories, a platform middleware, as well as an infrastructure which comes via Phoenix. Phoenix is an alliance of five super, supercomputing sites, naming uh, ULIC, CA, BSC, uh, CSCS, and Cineca. Uh, each one of the sites offers scalable and interactive computing services, virtual machine services, as well as data repositories. The initial version was developed by the ICI project under Human Brain Project. Um, Phoenix offers federated authentication and authorization infrastructure as well as different data mover and transfer services for moving and transferring data between different repositories within a site and between two sites. Now, from the end point of view, uh, as an end user, um, there are different eBrains platform resources where uh, the user can integrate their work within uh, eBrains. We, as technical coordination team, uh, proposed the last couple of years the standardized workflows approach, and this is what we will talk uh, we'll talk about here. Standardized workflows comes via the common workflow language. As we all know, Common Workflow Language is an open, common, standard format for describing data analysis and data simulation workflows as recipes. From the one hand, we have the creation and composing of standardized workflows via graphical editors, via code editors, and finding different workflows via the eBrains Knowledge Graph, as well as open uh, external repositories eBrains users can execute workflows found inside or outside of eBrains via compatible workflow platforms and engines and can monitor uh, them via central monitoring systems. Uh, we also have the notion of sharing and publishing standardized workflows via the eBrains Knowledge Graph. Uh, at eBrains Knowledge Graph, different workflows, results, data and metadata are stored and are also associated with research papers uh, and publications. Of course, fair principles are adhered. Now, let's dig in uh, a bit on the standardization aspect. Uh, we define in a common and standard way 
uh, e-print tools that are scientific simulations or data analysis pieces of software that are wrapped together with libraries, dependencies and binaries. We also define in these common and standard ways computational workflows, which are series of e-brain tools that can be linked to create direct acyclic graphs, loops or branches for accomplishing scientific objectives. Both computational workflows and e-brain tools will be executed via compatible workflow management systems and monitored via a central monitoring system as well. Now, let's dive in a bit more. For the definition uh, part, we already said that uh, we use the common workflow language for uh, tools and workflows to be defined. Uh, for eBrain tools, we kind of have two different types uh, of tools. Uh, we have non-interactive and interactive one. Uh, the interactivity comes with the fact that the user can uh, or cannot interact with the, prog the program before or at the runtime. For the standardization aspects, we focus on the non-interactive tools where users possibly interact with the program before the runtime. Uh, for eBrain setup tools, we uh, propose uh, for end users to um, create simple docker files so that they can build their docker images, they can tag their versions and they can push uh, their images into the eBrain's docker registry, which is Harbor. Uh, CWL as well as uh, different compatible with WL workflow engines are um, both, ca can work both with, bo with Singularity as well as Docker. Uh, for eBrain's uh, workflows, of course, we again use the uh, declarative uh, common format that CWL offers uh, for defining workflows, um, combining different eBrain's wrap tools that are also uh, defined via CWL uh, to create uh, workflows. For the execution part, uh, of course, as we said earlier, we have different uh, underlying infrastructure um, service systems, just like HPC systems, virtual machines. Uh, we also have um, OpenShift. And for different endpoints, we use uh, different engines uh, or uh, workflow platforms so that uh, um, they can execute the uh, standardized workflows. Last but not least, for the monitoring part, what we see here is extracted from the ELK and Kibana services. Um, this is a working prototype led by the technical coordination team. And um, it, this is actually uh, fetched information for workflows that are um, executed on top of the eBrain's underlying infrastructure. What we see here is the status of different workflows uh, with different workflow aspects uh, like workflow ID and workflow name. Now, let's talk about the use case of this standardized approach as we presented it here today. Uh, this is showcase 3 from work package 2 of uh, Human Brain Project. Uh, the author of the work, Arno Manasang, was kind enough to share with us his slides. You can find his name and his email uh, into the bottom left of the slide. Uh, please uh, be, uh, feel, feel free to contact him uh, if you would like. Uh, I'm not a scientist, I'm, I'm more of a technical person, so I will briefly um, share what this uh, showcase uh, does and not uh, go into much details. So case 3 focuses uh, on the problem of characterization of brain states um, based on brain activity and uh, understanding what the role of each state in the brain is and how the transitions from one state to another can occur. Uh, this problem is a multi-scale one since it not only comprises a global scale but also a smaller level. The most important brain states that occur in showcase 3 are awake-like and sleep-like, uh, which can then be used to test the state-dependent brain responsiveness, meaning that depending on whether we are in an awake 
or a sleep state, the brain will act differently depending on the stimuli given. So this is one of the uh, use cases of eBrain that actually um, moved their work from Jupyter Notebooks into uh, common work language uh, workflows. They have currently three different steps that are also uh, wrapped into uh, containerized methods via Docker and defined via SWL and are executed um, in the, um, on top of OpenShift via the test endpoint. One of uh, the future plannings uh, that planning that we would like to have is exploring different workflow engines or platforms on top of the underlying infrastructure that eBrain currently has or will have in the future. Uh, of course, have more use cases going into this standardized approach and direction, uh, possibly uh, integrating one into another. Uh, in general, what we proposed as a standardized approach was uh, very positive. The only concern is that the project will end uh, end of 2023. So we have some use cases that move forward with their work into the standardized approach, but um, maybe if we had more time, more use cases would come along. Uh, we also would like to dive into the uh, provenance aspect. We know that SWL comes with um, different aspects with respect to that. Uh, currently, as we're speaking, there is a work in progress implementation of dashboard for eBrains users to create, execute and monitor standardized workflows and also have a single point of truth for finding, exploring and browsing standardized workflows at eBrains via the eBrains knowledge graph. And this is to be released in uh, a couple of weeks from now. Please feel free to contact us uh, in one of the emails provided here uh, for Athena Research Center or myself or Eleni Mathiulakis email, uh, which is a colleague um, that helped a lot with this standardized approach, um, also a member of technical coordination team. Thank you very much and um, enjoy the CWL conference 2023.